it's what's dead may never die. Yes. I don't even know what that means, but I love it. I love the shit out of it. It's magic-y. And, <laughs> That's what it gives me. It's a little bit Sprinkled magic-y magic-y. there. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to another live stream from Zero Dark Nerdy, the galaxy's most average pop culture podcast. Brought to you by Sailfish Comics with three amazing locations here in North Carolina. One in Concord, one in Winston-Salem, as well as one in Greensboro, North Carolina, right across from Best Buy. Be sure to hit them up for all your graphic novel, comic book, and action figure needs. The best comic book shops around. Of course, we have the Believe Podcast Network to thank. That is B-L-E-A-V dot com. And on top of that, we want to give a big shout out to Mad Monster Con coming your way next weekend, Friday the 23rd through the 25th in Concord, North Carolina. They're going to have Walton Coggins there, Michael Chiklis, all kinds of stuff going on. And if you want to get some free tickets, be sure to go to our website for all of our trivia nights. We are going to be giving away three-day passes and Friday passes every single trivia night leading up to Mad Monster Con next week. So, of course, the website is popculturepodcast.com. And just be sure to click on the event page. It's going to let you know where to go. And, uh, yeah, I think that's it on the announcements. We're going to be talking uh, House of the Dragon Season 2 coming your way. We are a week late. I apologize. Vegas got got their grips in us. Big, big 40th birthday shout out to my amazing twin sisters, Janet and Janice. Love you both so much. Big shout out to everybody that made it out there. And, of course, to Circa and the good old Golden Nuggets. So I have with me today Sam from House Corner Bar, first of her name, queen of the Shotskis, breaker of Rumplemans, and ruler of the Seven Mug Knights. Sam, Woo-hoo. thank you so much for joining us today here on Zero Dark Nerdy. Yeah, I'm so excited. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> So for those of you that may not know Sam, she's a good friend of ours. We go visit her at the Corner Bar just about every weekend, if not every other weekend. The uh, One of the oldest bars in Greensboro and um, just one of, the, one of the best bars yes, in Greensboro, 100%. especially because she works there. Yes, yes. So she's really Come the by. main reason we go there. No offense, Kenny. You're doing your own thing now on social media. He doesn't need us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he can go and do his own nightclub thing if he wants to. <laughs> So we're there for, for Sam and, and, and the rest of the crew there. Um, so as, as Sam and I become friends, we talk a lot about Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon, everything else. And, uh, you know, it just became evident to me that she'd be crucial to be on this episode, especially because she is a very avid reader. Uh, we're going to talk about some of her other fandoms towards oh the gosh. end of the show. But, you know, she was telling me about how she's read Fire and Blood, and which, of course, is what House of the Dragon is based on. And I didn't think of any other better episode to have her on than this one right here. So, Sam, thank you so yeah, much for joining you. us. And... I don't think I'd want to do anything else either. This is my, <laughs> this is my go-to. <laughs> so, perfect. So, um, you know, before we get into the show, like, what... Because, I, I, you know, pre-show, you were telling me how you haven't read the original, you know, Song of yes. Ice and Fire books. So what is it that drew you to Fire and Blood? So I just, a couple years ago, started picking up reading. And I had just watched Game of Thrones, watched all of it, all the way through for the first time, binged it. Didn't watch it when it came out, so I had a different experience from everyone else. Um, and then they announced the House of Dragon show coming out, and it really intrigued me. And I knew that was based off of books that were finished already. So I was pretty interested in that. Mm-hmm. And I actually bought um, a book that wasn't Fire and Blood. It was like more of a picture book that went over the histories of it. And okay. it followed Fire and Blood. It just had pictures in it. Read that, loved it. So that's what made me pick up the actual Fire and Blood and read it through. Gotcha. So I kind of like got the gist of Fire and Blood before I read it. But then Fire and Blood is very more in-depth and a lot more happening than the picture version of it. <laughs> gotcha because <Yes. laughs> i mean there's tons of obvious wormholes you can go down i mean the moment they say something in game of thrones especially now in house of the dragon like when they mention the god's eye yep. i forgot what the god's eye was i <laughs> there's a lot not remember it was a gigantic na- lake next to harren hall 
But you were telling me, and just after some more research that I was doing, that it reads more like a textbook than an actual yes, novel. you're correct. It does. It reads like you're reading a history book out of school, like you're in history class, and you're sitting here reading about what happened thousands of years ago. But it's all made up, and it's – I don't know how he does it. You really don't yeah. write like that, especially yeah. a history that he didn't even start with. Expansive. And then, like it's crazy i'm like how do you build a world like that where do you start building a world like that yeah. like it doesn't make any sense to me but it's incredible so and i mean just the 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 thought that it takes into and then as he's you know writing a song of fire and ice well i need to go back and do a whole story on the targaryens how did and how did... here and mapping yes. it all out on top of that too like i find myself um I, if you just google uh game of thrones map there is an interactive map yes. that you can follow. And literally, you just click on certain areas, and it gives you an entire history I'm about it. I'm going to have to look that up. It's <laughs> intense. And again, another rabbit hole. But there are tons of spoilers, which, as you yes. know, listening to the podcast, I should have mentioned this earlier, lots of spoilers ahead. So if you have not finished House of the Dragon Season 2, you may want to hold off. But if you don't care... And you're in, Maybe then you're all in. for the later seasons, too, possibly. Yeah, yep. lots of spoilers so, ahead. I Maybe. mean, we, we kind of know what happens because there's spoilers in Game of Thrones that talks about House of the Dragon. Yes. So spoilers and swear words ahead, <laughs> as always. Oh, gosh. Um, all right. So let's, let's get to season two now, now that you've talked about the books a little bit. Before we really, really get into season two, where would you say like we are at in between the show and the book right now? Like, Pretty, are we halfway? Like at the start of season two? So or no, no, just like after after season two is now wrapped up, where where are we kind of at? Because now we found out that it is going to wrap up after season four. Yes. So we are only going to get two more seasons of this, which are going to be spaced out I across would, six years, probably. I would say compared to the book right now, we are probably about halfway, but. I would say a little more towards like a quarter just because we there was a lot of politics that they cut out as well. But like okay. now we're going to get into a lot of uh, more battles and things like that. And I don't know if they're going to stick with that with the show okay. considering they've cut some battles. But they're also – Oh. You can't like – I mean the first one was cut. Um, oh, was the, episode four. With the, the burning, burning mills. The yep. burning mills. Yep. Right. Like, right. But I mean – not huge to cut it but i have a feeling with season three and four we're definitely going to get more battles i okay. think i hope i, I mean think, from but... from what they from what they said i love i will say this it is kind of a tease because you turn on the episode and it tells you it's going to be this long and i'm like oh it's going to be an hour 20 minutes going to be an hour 30 yep. really the last 15 minutes are the behind the scenes behind stuff. Behind the scenes and then the next episode. And in the next yep. episode, which I do like that, but mm -hmm. it, it does cut into, <laughs> it cuts into what, what we could have what had. We, what we could have had. Yes. And, uh, you know, the showrunner, I can't remember his name, but, you know, it's him and, and you know, G and George R. R. Martin. They're the ones that came up with the show. So at least it's, we know it's going to finish and be true to his book more than so. the show. We I hope mean, so. They changed it right off the bat with season one, episode one. Really? Aging. Aging Allison down, she's not friends with Rhaenyra in the books. They are not friends. She's about 10 years oh. older than her. That's, like, the biggest change, and it's straight out the bat, like, making them friends in the first episode. Really? They grew up together. They did I, not do that. Wow, I did not know that. <laughs> they are did not, not friends. That. They never loved each other in the book. Never yeah, loved yeah. each other in the book. Wow. So, yeah, because they make them seem like, like best friends. Yeah, no, that was a show change. Oh. And that's for us to, like, enjoy and like the characters more. I don't think Allison would have been as likable. Okay. If they didn't have a friendship before. Right, because you probably, you know, we all would have went into it like, fuck this bitch. Yeah, like, kind of are in the books. <laughs> and I mean, right. I kind of am in the show too. But <laughs> right, we, we, we got to that way sense. regardless. But at least this way, there's a little bit of heart there. Yeah. So, so let me ask you, I did not know that. So in between, especially this season where they go meet each other three that times. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen at all in the books. Oh. Oh, I mean, wow. there's one time later on, Allison will, like, she begs in the books or something from Renera, but it, Renera's just like, okay. <laughs> mm. They aren't. It was never like, come talk, let's friends that loved each other kind of situation. That's, no, no. So for you now, <laughs> no book readers, there. you heard it here first, because I had no idea. No idea. And that's, that's my thing, just to kind of backtrack a little bit. I used to be the person that wanted to read the stuff and then see the material. 
Mm-hmm. I, I did the same thing with video games. So I have purposely not played uh, The Last of Us 2 because the show is not there yet. And I don't want... I want the, I want to enjoy the show for the show because I feel like, for instance, Ready Player One, absolutely love the book. I understand that they changed a lot of things to make it more this century yes. compared to when it came out. But when I first saw it, I thought it was terrible. And then when I went in again, just thinking, don't think about the book. Think about the movie and just take the movie for what it is. I enjoyed it so much more. I think you have to do that sometimes because I – don't think I'd enjoy a lot of things if I just <laughs> liked the book. Like right. they have to make changes here and there, and right. I get some of them. I will say season one was a little rushed. Like we didn't get to actually see, and I feel like people were like, "It's so boring" because they're like, "It's all politics and people getting to know each other." But I'm like, "You need that. We need that." And then season two, they've sped it up a little bit, I think. But okay, I think it's okay. I think it's fine where we're going. Are there know. are there any characters? that you felt like, oh, my gosh, they, like, nailed it. And, and like, which ones were you, like, ah, I think they could have maybe done better on? Definitely. <laughs> I mean, Damon, yes, because this season he's a little bit more dislikable and people aren't yeah. having him. And in the book he's a lot more dislikable. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't think anyone's, like, straight on, like, how they are in the book. Cause, okay. I mean, they're making us like them and do different things. And, like, you got to do changes. the TV thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 So – because, I, I mean, let, let's face it, the George R.R. R. Martin world is fucking dark. <laughs> it's dark as hell. I mean, Blood and Cheese, that was, I'm sorry, very soft. <laughs> it was very soft in the TV show. It, it could have, should have been a lot worse. What, a lot what, worse. What's Blood and Cheese? Blood and Cheese, where they sawed his head off in the show. Oh, the first episode, yeah, the yeah. last, you don't he- see anything, you just hear yeah, it. But yeah. it honestly should have just been a. Yeah, really but quick, still, you know, you, 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 got, you got little we kids around, you know. I mean,. So it made it like kind of <laughs> it, that was supposed to have the same reaction that we had to the red wedding, and I did not feel that. The red it should wedding have been was worse feeling. You should have felt like your guts turning. It was bad. I think the red wedding is is one of the most instrumental episodes crazy. of TV history, where you're just like, wow, wow, you like did, this dude do doesn't give a damn about the main characters. No. He does not. At all. Like, is this family ever going to make it? <laughs> like, maybe we just get bad news throughout the whole entire thing, which is what it really felt like. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much what the Dance of Dragons is, too. Bad news after bad news for everybody. It's only a couple people live, so just all right. all be prepared. Right. So, um, you know, what What are some of your, your favorite episodes from, from this season? Um... And maybe maybe not so favorite. Some that we could have, you know. I know you said that you it felt rushed, but some that we could have done without. I wouldn't say like full entire episodes or anything. I think there's some things that could have been taken out and some things added. Like, I at first I was very unhappy with Damon's time at Heron Hall and how he was handling that, and yeah. I didn't understand why he was still there and doing all that. But then by the last episode and what happened through all that, I really enjoyed it because it brought a lot to his character and shows us where he is now and where he needed to get said he was what Rhaenyra needs now. I don't, I liked what they did with that. It was boring at first, but you just have to write it through. But like the little things like that, they probably didn't need to do as many scenes, I feel like, with that. But then things I love, that battle of episode four, uh-huh. I thought that was some of the best cinematography I've seen in a really long time coming from a tv show like it was crazy to fantastic see. and like, i'm not i'm not here cutting you off i'm just no, trying to read read some of the uh, comments here oh gosh, big Connors. shout out to matt williams yo i know you haven't caught up like i said spoilers ahead my friend but you know what's gonna happen so you can still enjoy the episode or listen to it to another day janice running to buy the books because i had no idea about their friendship is why i had to br- i had to H-Gap bring in the too. ringer Age and the gap. age gap. So how big is the age gap? I think it's about 10 or 12 years. So. Really? Yes. So they're not even childhood Yeah, and friends. it's also not as weird that Allison got with Viserys after um, Eamon died. Yeah, Ugh. Eamon. No, not Eamon. Uh, Emma. Oh, gotcha. The names. So, oh, yeah, my goodness. Just... I will say this. That this is the one time. I thought the original Game of Thrones show was kind of confusing. This oh, shit yeah, with no. the names, I feel like they have to wear name tags on every episode. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just going to make me feel better. And like, even if they say like Eamon the second or the third, I, was, I would still 
be confused. Even reading Fire and Blood, though, it's confusing because there's so many houses that you don't see. Right. Like in the TV every episode, and you're just like, wait, what? Or right. like, Cause houses cause you've I, never house, heard Hightower of. Hightower isn't like, re- like not even really mentioned in Game, Game of Thrones. Thrones no, I yeah. think because this is like their fault right here is with House Targaryen. You could call it the fall of House Hightower with mm-hmm. Targaryen at this point. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. And then, um, you know, big shout out to everybody else out there. Aaron Cage, what's up, my dude? Janice. I don't know why. Oh, I think that's my wife. Hi, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> Curtis, Ashton, Luke, Cappy, Jan. What up, Jan Little? Johnson City High School in the house. New York. New York, not Tennessee. Nothing against Tennessee. But got to give a big shout out to my New Yorkers out there. All right. So um, in, in terms of just kind of my opinion, I want to give you just a little break. This is her, yeah. her first podcast. I'm She's been nervous, a little nervous. Guys been a little nervous but i think she's doing fantastic i told her i said if i can do this anyone can do it so um you know this season i I was upset that it was eight episodes compared to 10 which is what we had last season um you know just like you said the the battle with rainice at rook's rust at rook's rust rook's rust rust wrist again rick rick yeah we we need our own uh, alphabet for all this shit yeah, cinematography wise, for us to really kind of get our first glimpse of dragons battling together, oh, yeah. besides what we saw in Game of Thrones at the Battle of Winterfell, which was really the last time we saw yeah. bat like dragons battle, it was more it was more cut. Yeah. To where you saw from a distance where this was up close, super, super up close. The images them flying out is crazy. Uh, cool. I mean, just just outstanding. I think the performances to me are are fantastic um i mean i don't think i'm the only one that hates kristen cole but you do, <laughs> oh you're doing gosh. you're doing a good job if people hate you yes and that's 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 acting that's the thing now i want to remind everybody out there these people are actors yes. do not send them death threats or letters or anything else like poor joffrey this yes, guy he doesn't act anymore. He doesn't act anymore because of the, fan base. because of the so yeah. Crazy. And I mean, even um, old girl that played Cersei, she still gets hate. Like, this is fiction. You okay, know, this is not real life. You, so you know, the actress that played Cersei when she had a baby in the hospital, one of the nurses came up to her and like couldn't help herself and started saying shame to her while oh she just had a baby in the hospital. Gosh, I never knew that. <laughs> you know how embarrassing that would be. I'd be like. Just yeah. Step away. And I mean, and they're. I mean, I'm not saying that wealthy people have their own hospitals. I'm sure you do out there, you Illum- Illuminati. <laughs> but uh, I guess he's not that wealthy enough. <laughs> Goodness, see, I couldn't, I couldn't take that because my thing is, and I've brought this up on many episodes before. Like Yakin Phoenix and Gladiator, his performance was so good, I hated him. But I didn't hate him as a person. Yeah, I no. hated his because he, his, he did so well as that character. So. For those of you out there, please know that this is fiction. Yes. These people are acting. Relax. This is what they're supposed to do. You're supposed to hate them. Yes. They're doing a good job in their acting. Um, but even like Kristen Cole, like I, I, I was a little bit upset about the. Uh, there's been a lot of comparisons to Luigi's Mansion with with Damon <laughs> and Heron Hall. Yes, I've seen that. <laughs> uh, um, which is really what it's been. But I, I've come to realize through a lot of wormholes and rabbit holes that i did not know this heron hall the majority of it was made out of the the weirwood mm-hmm. so right. you know the god's wood right yes. that's another name for it is what it's known for which hence increases the hallucinations and the nightmares and everything there's else. a lot of things with heron hall but yeah like it's also the first time we're getting to see magic in house of dragon that isn't a dragon like we're actually getting to see some of the magic we saw in game of thrones in the later seasons yeah. and it's interesting i'm like it's also why i had to like step away and be like it's not terrible what's happening there because we're actually seeing like yeah our first witch like right. we, rivers like we Still learning kind of what's going to go on with her, too. And right. there's a lot that's going to go on there, too. And it's kind of weird, especially later on. I yeah. don't know. And I mean, I'm, if they I'm, follow the books. Yeah, and I'm glad how they tied it in, you know, with, with Damon's arc, too. Because mm-hmm. he was, you could tell when he left um, Dra- Dragonstone, when he left the Heron Hall, he was like, fuck this. Like, I don't, I can raise my own army. I can do whatever. And then you kind of see that arc come... And that was a great moment where, you know, Rhaenyra, um, Rhaenyra, again, this is 
why we need names. name tags, you know, comes and he's like, I'm surprised you showed up and you're still not sure. And, yeah. you know, he's like, I, I saw it. I saw what your dad saw, yes. what my brother saw. And it's bigger than us. Mm-hmm. And that to me, I was like, okay. Yes. All right. I mean, I don't even know. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. I had something, but it went away. Um, but I think the Heron Hall, I mean, we, if you know, you know, it's going to play a big part in stuff later as well. So, but nice. Oh, oh, Kenny from Corner Bar is actually chiming oh in. He hasn't watched the season. I don't think he was, has watched I didn't any know House he followed, Dragon. I didn't know he followed anyone else but him, but I'm not, I'm not seeing anything in, in the comments. <laughs> Maybe though. he should shout us out. So, but just to catch up real quick, Jan Little again, what's up, Aaron? What's up, guys? Aston, I, I had a, a live stream with this gentleman uh, not too long ago on the uh, the MCU Bleeding Edge. Good to see you. He says, salute from Croatia. Hernandez holding it down. Deborah Jones, what's up? Jan Little, love you too, my friend. Laura Bonino, hello. Is it really going to be two years until the next season? Yes. They don't even start filming season two until, I season think. Season three. Or think, season three. I think three. they said hopefully the beginning of the year. So well, Hopefully the beginning of the year, hopefully. but we got to expect 2026, so um gonzalez whoa my cousin what's up gonzalez uh aston i was an extra in season uh two of game of thrones awesome phoenix was the bomb and gladiator yes he was, he was an extra i want to be an oh extra. kenny giard said touche <laughs> touche <laughs> <laughs> oh the breaker of rumplemints himself <laughs> kenny <mine>. g <laughs> well we'll give we'll give him that one He's the, he's the breaker of the internet right now. I bet I could battle him and beat him in Rumpelman shots. Ooh, you heard it here first. <laughs> Zero know. dark nerdy. I take it back. Rumpelman's battle. Oh, I would end bad. Sam, first of her name. <laughs> going up against Kenny G. Hard. All right, so um, back to the show real quick. How much time we got? Oh, yeah, we still got plenty got of, time of time here. We got a lot of time. See, you're getting comfortable now. You're good. A little bit. Yeah, the alcohol is doing its thing. How's Sam doing out there, everybody? Put some, you know, make some noise. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some... There we go. Put some out there. There we go. All right. So what what are some things just off the top of your head on your mind about maybe predictions where season three may go? How many episodes do you think? And you obviously know the time jumps. So there's no more time jumps. Oh, there's no on. more time jumps. No, after what we saw in season one, there should not be any more time jumps. Okay. Because okay. now we're just... We're in war now. Like, there's, I mean, we're maybe about. at the end, towards the end, after some things happen, they could do a charm jump just right. to show us, like, how it all Fan ends. service. Like, kinda, oh, we're going we're gonna to head into Robert's Rebellion kind of thing. I don't know. That's so far away. Like, okay. I feel like the Baratheons are just kind of there. Because I, like, I feel like now we're, you know, it started off 200 years away. Mm-hmm. I feel like we're, like, 100 and maybe 25 years away now. I don't know. Maybe we haven't gone that far. Well, since okay. we've probably gone like maybe twenty, thirty years since the beginning. Like, cause I mean, Rhaenyra. Well, no, not even that. Maybe twenty max. Okay. All right. All right. Cause Rhaenyra dies at the age of thirty-four, so she's not that old. Yeah, we we already said spoilers, but yeah. if you watch Game of I Thrones. Mean, this isn't really a spoiler. Dies. Everybody dies. Like I said, there's only a few people who live. Just be aware. At some point, everybody's going to die. Like, literally, what's I think a, I can count a... five people that are main cast right now. That all, all men must die. And apparently women, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what, what are your thoughts on, um, I'd like to call him, like, this, 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 uh, this show's little finger. Oh, Lord Laris? Yes, Lord Laris. Yeah, little <laughs> little foot. We'll call him little know. foot. Oh, he needs feet finder real bad. Jeez, <laughs> he was in Igon's leg during that scene in the bed. He was crying, but also like, ooh, dang. That dude was the first OnlyFans member on like in existence. <laughs> He was the first one to make feet super popular. Oh I actually really enjoy him, and I'm curious what they're going to do with him on the show because I don't know his intentions right now, okay. but. If we follow the books, we won't see him for quite a while. I think how they left that. I I, I think so too. I think it's going to be a thing to where it's almost like where where Bron, they go mm-hmm. over I don't and know. into I'm, the north, and then you don't see him for a whole season. Yeah, I, mean, I don't even know if he'll be in the next season. Actually, if they're going to like do what they do in the books, like, yeah, I don't know if we're going to see him or Aegon. Okay. So okay, but that 
that might now let's see let's see what they do with with this season here how do you, how did you think it went down compared to the books to to the show with the uh the one-offs i guess you could say claiming their dragons I mean that's pretty to the books. Yep. Like she calls for the dragon seeds, and they th- think she had like sixteen of them try though, and it's them who like come through. But also like the one of the wild dragons, which we're seeing Reina follow around. She, she mm-hmm. it's a dragon seed that claims sheep stealer, not Reina. And oh. I think that's where they're going with the show. They cut so that's pretty much a person that gets sheep stealer is nettles, and I'm hundred percent they've cut her from the show. They're not oh. bringing that. And that character has, like, things that go on with Renera and Damon, too. So it's kind of weird that they cut that character out. But I also yeah. think it's so we don't hate other characters more. But <laughs> we I already hate I, enough. <laughs> I, at this point, with Reyna chasing across the veil looking for her, I think that's completely cut at okay. this point. Okay. And I think Reyna somehow is going to take the storyline, but I don't really know what they're going to do with her. I don't know. I don't, I don't. Just a couple more comments out there. Mark James, my man, taking over the wrestling universe. Good to see you, my friend. We got to catch up soon. Uh, Kenny G. Art said challenge on the Rumpelman's challenge. This would, this might have to be a Zero Dark Nerdy exclusive. We might, we, might just, we might have to sell tickets to this bad boy. <laughs> um, Sam's killing it. See? Just as good that. just as good on here as behind the bar. There you <laughs> go. That, Kenny? Janice, my sister, I now demand to be referred to as Janice, first of her name when I enter a room. (laughs) Cappy, I joined a little late. Would you say the books are worth reading? Yes. I would say yes. I haven't read A Song of Ice and Fire, though, just because they're not finished. They're not done. I'm scared to even start that and them not be finished. Big shout out to my cousin Koki for joining us. Uh, Janice laughed at Everyone Dies. Laura, uh, the books are the best. JC, JC, what's up, my dude? Excellent. Um, what else do we have here? All right. So I just wanted to ask you a couple things. You, you know, a lot of people already know my opinions. Just real quick. Thought the season was pretty good. Like I said, upset that we stopped at eight instead of ten. I actually had to go back because I was like, was the first season eight episodes? And it was not. And just the teaser. I never just got used to seeing like an hour and 25 minutes thinking that we actually had an hour and 25 minutes, even though I love, love the behind the scenes stuff. Love seeing how it all gets made. Yep. But um, it was a little disappointing, you know, a nice little cliffhanger. And at least we now have the reassurance that the next two seasons is all out war. I think I saw something that when they were making the season, they were about like halfway through and with like deadlines and stuff. They were supposed to do 10 episodes and they had to cut back to eight to make the deadlines they have, which is really upsetting. But they also said like at the same time, they're pretty much making many movies every episode. It's a whole, I mean, the CGI, everything is. Yeah. I mean, they they were doing more on season one of this year financially than almost the last two seasons of Game of Thrones. Yeah. So it's, it is a lot of money. I mean, especially when you have dragons and you want them to look good. Oh yeah. (laughs) And they do look good. They're not too book accurate, some of them, but they, they look pretty cool. They look awesome to me. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to go up, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm house chancla for all my Puerto Ricans out there, house sandal. So, uh, you know, I don't know if the, uh, the dragons respond well to me throwing sandals at them when they're not listening. So, um, all right. So I, I got to ask you, you know, and, and this doesn't all have to be the same, but what's your favorite house, your favorite sigil and your favorite motto in the whole G R R M dynasty are we okay so i guess i mean i i think my favorite house is targaryen for sure okay i, I want to be Renera, so okay. <laughs> <laughs> um um my ha- favorite sigil actually isn't in the shivi show it's from the book so when aegon and Rhaenyra split up and they're like doing the sigils and the tv show it's like a green like dragon for the sigil for aegon because, you know, mm-hmm. Team Green go back. And I think they did that for the show for us to pick teams. But in the book, his banner is actually just black with a um, gold dragon as the sigil to match Sunfire, his dragon. Okay. That's why he, like, picked that. So, and then Rhaenyra's banner is actually completely different. And she has, like, other houses on her banner with hers. So, oh. it's actually very different from the TV show. But I think they did that for marketing mm. and for us to be, like, Team Black, Team Green. Right. But... 
Um, okay. George R. R. Martin's going to owe you some commissions on the book sales because people are like, I need to get the books now. You do. And I mean, there's a lot more stories like because Fire and Blood starts with like kind of a little bit on Old Valera and then you go into Aegon's Conquest and it's like, oh, yeah. And you, that's what I want to see. Yeah. It's Aegon's Conquest. I mean, I don't really want to see Aegon's Conquest only because. <laughs> I want to see Valyrian the Dread. It's pretty much. Well, yeah, you see a lot of him, but like it's pretty <laughs> much him and his sister wives just fucking everybody up. And there's, it's pretty one-sided, so you're not going to get any of these like major battles or anything. You're pretty much just going to get people getting burned alive and bending the knee. Okay, so for all of us <laughs> that like to beat up on other people in sports games, when show no mercy, that's for us. Okay, yeah, there you go, <laughs> there you go. But yeah, no, that book covers a lot more than just the Dance okay. of Dragon. It's like probably I think maybe a hundred and something pages in the whole book. Okay. So like it's you got a lot of stuff in there, and it's because it's the whole Targaryen like yeah. history, like yeah. from start to end when they fell off. So yeah. and this isn't even really their full fall off yet. Okay. I mean, it's okay. kind of when it starts though. Now, and what's your favorite house motto? Oh my god. I feel like I'm dumb for saying this, but I like I know winter isn't coming is not their house motto, but like that's just like my favorite line. And whenever no, that's their house motto. Okay, it is. And then yeah. whenever Damon heard winter is coming and like said it out loud to Renera, I was like, oh, whoa. This I is all of us. I Anytime we see something Game of Thrones happen on House well, of Dragons, I really didn't think they'd show like him seeing the actual dream. Because that, right. I didn't think they were going to give that to Damon, but I also think they changed that to make him, like, finish his arch, like, finish. Finish the arch, but on top of that, too, like, also give fan service to all of us. Yes. Honestly, I loved Thrones. They brought back Patty, like, this season, and young Rhaenyra as yeah. well. They did, like, really good. I was not expecting that when I saw them. I was like, whoa, okay, yeah. brought them back. Cool. Nice. Nice. Did I miss any others? No, no, What are that's yours? Good. What are your favorites? So, um... I mean, I got to go, as far as house name Stark, I just love it, you know, I, and not just because of Iron Man, I mean, kind of, <laughs> maybe, but, uh, you know, house Stark is just fucking awesome, but I got to switch it up with the motto in the sigil, though. The sigil, I love house Greyjoy, the Kraken. Yeah. I just, I'm a, you know, I'm a man, I'm Puerto Rican, from the sea, <laughs> from I'm the from sea. Salt. You are. <laughs> so. Not fire. Yeah, yeah. From, from the Iron Islands Gosh. of Puerto Rico. But I got to say, to me, it's almost a tie, but the motto for House Baratheon, we are the fury. Yo. They don't even that have shit dragons, goes so. fucking hard. I know. That goes hard. Yeah, their, their sigil sucks and everything else sucks, but we are the fury. I mean, if you, mm. if you think about it, like, if you read the book and read about Rob Baratheon, he's actually one of the, like, best fighters in all of Westeros whenever he was, yeah. like, in his prime. Yeah. So, like, he probably did bring the fury. Yeah, I mean, he, he won. He started a whole rebellion. Yeah, just because so. the rest of the family sucked. Don't don't take that against the rest of them. But I, mean, I, even, I saw that. I was like, we are the fury. Shit. I mean, in Game of Thrones, do we really even meet any other Baratheons? Because even no. his kids aren't his. Like, no. so. All right. But I mean, you know, I'm just saying, we're talking about the motto here. Yes, we're not talking yes, about the, the history. motto. Is cool. Now, I do like, even though, like I said, this was a, a very like close. It was between We Are the Fury. I do like We Do Not Sow. Again, going back to uh, House Greyjoy, because they just don't really give a like shit. Them. And, uh, you know, <laughs> even though it's not their motto, um, what is it? Uh, the. the What's, what's dead may never die. Yes. I don't even know what that means, but I love it. I love the shit out of it. It's magic-y. I, <laughs> That's what it gives me. It's a little bit magic-y magic there. Yeah. <laughs> a little salt bay magic. <laughs> I hope we see some more magic. I also was really Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, 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 Helena, what, what do you want to see Helena, on the next one? Her dragon dreamer. I think she's probably one of the craziest dragon dreamers I've ever seen. Her, did, cause did you notice in the episode that she was like actually talking to Damon? Like, Eamon walks up yeah. when she's like in that, when Damon's having that like yeah. dream or whatever he's having. Yeah. She was like actually there talking to Damon, and Eamon like catches the end of it, which is crazy to me. Yeah. I was like, whoa, Helena is crazy <laughs> powerful, this girl. And then her just being like, if he's, cause he's like, I wanna, I'm not gonna kill you. And she's like, it won't change anything. Like, I was like, she savage. was pretty badass. Savage. Good call. <laughs> Good call. Because we've known she's had some mystical shit. 
oh, she's a dragon dreamer. She yeah. sees the future. She's seen it all. That's yeah. why she told Eamon. She's like, I saw you. Yeah. I saw you. You let him fall. You burned him. Like, yeah. I was there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. When she when she said that, she was like, it ain't going to change a damn thing. Yep. I was Just like, Drop the bike. Walk away, girl. Yeah. <laughs> Because, I mean, she's already like, I, I lost a kid, I lost a husband, I don't know what else going on, but I see all this shit going on. I'm also wondering, because uh, in that episode, Aegon said his dragon's dead, and he's Sunfire is not dead in the book. Oh. So I'm like wondering if they're changing, and that's crazy if they're changing that. I'm really interested to see where that goes, because his dragon is not supposed to be dead, but he said my we dragon told you is spoilers. dead. spoilers. said his dragon's dead, and I was like. Yeah. But not not dead in the books. Not dead in the books. Very much injured and surviving at Root's Rest by the people there that are protecting it now for Team Green. <sighs> quick quick shout outs real quick. Big shout out to Mark James. Appreciate the thoughts. Haven't watched a new Game of Thrones yet. I've been on the fence. Get Do up it. in here. You got you got two seasons you can binge through. Straight politics though. Don't and be upset uh, if about you want to post, Mark, your next wrestling event on here, you know I'm gonna promote the shit out of it. Mark, good friend of mine. Hell of a wrestler. This guy is just a tremendous. Saw him locally right the day before the Sting match at the Coliseum. It was fantastic. Mark James, the Brute, represent NYC. Love you, homie. Um, who else we got? Alex. Big boy Alex. What's going on, brother? Kendra. Ronnie. Cappy. House Chancla. I'm dead. Yeah. I had to bring up the House Chancla. Decker's even watching. Look at Decker. No I thought you were way. off the grid. I didn't even know Decker had internet. He's at the beach. He's with, <laughs> what? I heard he's at the beach. Aaron Miller's watching, and then Janice Hernandez from Sazon. <laughs> so um, this is going to just about wrap it up for our latest live episode. I'll have the audio version out if you want to recap recapture this magic with Sam. Oh, yeah. Hey. It was so much fun. Hey, was, <laughs> this, this was a good time. I told you you are going to do good. Time went really fast. <laughs> See? Kind of See? Um, the video will be up on YouTube here in the next day or so. As always, be sure to check us out, popculturepodcast.com, courtesy of our good friends over at Zibster. That is Z-I-B-S-T-E-R, right here in Greensboro, North Carolina. They can help you with your podcast dreams and wishes and all that all that fun stuff. You can go visit the very own Sam Lopez. At the Corner Bar. The Corner Bar. What, what shifts are you normally working? Uh, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Friday day, and Saturday doubles. Pretty much the same every week. There you go. And we're getting back to doing episodes at least every other week. Getting back to every week. We just got back from Vegas, like I said. Finally recovered. I think everybody's healthy now. Um, yeah, don't worry. I didn't, I didn't give you COVID. But Sam, <laughs> thank you so much for, for joining us here on the House of Dragons Season 2 Review. And uh, we will be back. I'm not going to wait two years to have her back on. We're going to have her. Oh, yeah. Tell, tell people about some of your fandoms, like some of the stuff that you've been telling me about, because I do have uh -huh. a lot of uh, like friends out there that follow some of the uh, the books that you read. So, yeah, like I said, I got into reading just a couple years ago again, and um, uh, I love romance fantasy. So, like, that's my main. I do like fantasy. I want to say high fantasy too much. Like, uh, Fire and Blood is, like, the highest fantasy I've read so far. Like, I'm not going to lie, Lord of the Rings stresses me out. Like, <laughs> looks like it'll take me probably a year to read a book from him. So, but um, I read a lot of romance, fantasy, um, dark romance. But I'm going to, like, a book con up in Orlando or down in Orlando in, like, two months. So, I'm really excited for that. Nice. Yeah, it's going to be lots of magic and fun stuff so you gotta sprinkle that i know that, i get a i get a 3d magic. printed dragon and i get like a hey. whole, whole thing that goes with it so i'm excited so but yeah i like to read a court of thorns and roses best series out there it's not finished which is really upsetting but she's getting there she's getting so there. big shout out to my friend julie johnson with the fangirls podcast be sure to check them out they cover that as well as many many other books that's where Sam, like, I started realizing Sam was just as big of an awesome nerd as I am and talking about this stuff. So um, thank you for, yeah, for joining for having us. Me. Seriously. This was fun. I was nervous at first, but yeah. I think I feel better now. Yeah. Yeah. Can yeah. Can do can, it again. Yeah, if, I, if I can do it, anyone can do it. I promise you. I get yeah. anxiety through uh, before every episode, and then about five minutes in, it's good. Big shout outs to everybody that joined us. Um, you know, again, this is a live stream. If you're just now listening or just now watching, we still appreciate you. Be sure to check out Sam if you're here in Greensboro at the Corner Bar. Be sure to check us out on all your favorite podcast platforms. Give us a like, subscribe, rating, 
means the world to us. As always, big shout outs to Sailfish Comics, the Believe Podcast Network, Golden Ticket Cinemas, formerly Brassfield Cinemas, and Mad Monster Con next weekend. Be sure to check out our trivia nights every single day. Leading up to next week, we are going to be giving away three-day passes and Friday passes to Mad Monster Con in Concord, North Carolina. So go to popculturepodcast.com, hit up the event page. You can see exactly when and where we're doing our trivia nights. Until next time, on behalf of Zero Dark Nerdy, I'm Brian. I'm Sam. We'll see you next time. Peace!